Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com for premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, every now and then I talk with some younger guys about basketball. And these guys who have been raised watching a half-court game always look amazed and befuddled when I tell them that back in the day, back in the 1980s, there was something called a fast break. And the guys running that fast break were masters, right? Tiny Archibald, Magic Johnson, Fat Lever, right? The pace was such that if you were a half-court team, you couldn't keep up. You know, in fact, there was a name for it in Los Angeles. They called it Showtime. And let me tell you, if you couldn't trade baskets with Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Byron Scott, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Cooper, if you couldn't keep up, you fell behind. Even the teams that we think today were great defensive teams, right? Bird, McHale, and Parrish were putting up well north of 100 points in playoff games, right? The pace killed you. Let me just say, I think about Showtime back in the 80s. I don't even know how the Miami Heat come within 10 points of that team because there's just too much. Magic Johnson would be running up the court. Who on the Miami Heat would be able to keep up with him? That's the feeling I get. When I think about Daniel Gill against Darren Barker, you know, simply put, if you can't match the pace of Daniel Gill, you're finished. And I don't think Darren Barker can. I like Daniel Gill in this fight. Let me just say this. Take a look not at Darren Barker's victory over Kerry Hope. You know, Kerry Hope is a nice guy, but he's not a great fighter. Okay, let's look at Darren Barker against a great fighter. Let's look at Darren Barker against Sergio Martinez. When you look at the CompuBox numbers, you're going to be astonished. Right? Darren Barker has rounds where he's throwing, and I'll just read the rounds and read the punches. Throw, not landed. Throw, throwing. Right, first round, he throws 25 punches. Second round, 28 punches. Third round, 31 punches. Fourth round, 40 punches. Fifth round, 38 punches. You get the idea. Against Martinez, Darren Barker throws a Saul Alvarez-esque 408 punches punches. Right? Keep in mind, the knockout didn't take place until the 11th round. Understand, Sergio Martinez, by contrast, throws 691 punches. Right? Darren Barker throws 408 punches. Now, I know Barker has higher volume against lesser competition. But understand, Daniel Gill is the deep end of the pool. In my opinion, for all of the problems publicly that Anthony Mundine has had in the media, I view Anthony Mundine, who Daniel Gill just beat, as better than Darren Barker. Right? Gambling, you have to make hard judgments. Consider that a hard judgment. Let's look at the Gil Mundine fight. Daniel Gil throws 690 punches. Now keep in mind, that's important. 
because Anthony Mundane is the kind of fighter who sucks up your volume, right? Mundane is excellent defensively. It's very hard to land cleanly on Anthony Mundane. Fighters tend to slow down against Anthony Mundine. Just like when you see a fighter against Bernard Hopkins, his volume tends to take a hit, right? But yet, even against Anthony Mundine, Gill had a healthy 690 punch work rate, right? Let me also point out that Mundine actually throws 646 punches in the fight. But then here we see the difference in the punch distribution. While Mundine is throwing mainly jabs, Daniel Gill is throwing mainly power shots. I believe the problem Darren Barker, a chess player, is going to have is he's going to be trying to play chess at a slower pace than Daniel Gill is going to allow him to fight, right? Just like teams facing Showtime, sooner or later, even when that team is doing well, the wheels would come off the rails because they just couldn't maintain that pace for four quarters. That's how it's going to be, in my opinion, for Darren Barker against Daniel Gill. I think Darren Barker will find that he simply cannot match the punch count or the ferocity, the triple and quadruple jabs, the hooks, the volume, the movement that Daniel Gill is going to throw at him. Right? Both of these guys apparently were amateurs together. Both of them were in the Commonwealth Games together. What I've found is that a fighter will look at another fighter earlier in their career and will reach the conclusion that they have more than the other fighter. I have no doubt that Darren Barker believes that he's going to beat Daniel Gill. But I believe that pacing is very hard to judge when you're outside the ring. Right? I think Darren Barker is looking at what Gill does and is thinking how he would counter it. The problem is inside the ring, he might not have time to think it through. I think the action is going to be too voluminous for him. I believe the pace is going to be too fast for him. I like middleweight champion Daniel Gill in this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.